Today we will take a brief academic journey on the subject of the structure and function of tubulin in disease. Did you know that there are railroad tracks inside your cells? Particles, pouches, even DNA that are pulled around and walk around on these railroad tracks. Unlike railroad tracks that trains use, these tracks in our cells can quickly form and then break apart in a matter of seconds. Knowing how these railroad tracks work allows scientists to control them so that they can better understand health and disease. We are going to have a brief introduction of the first person to figure out the basic structure of the building blocks that form these railroad tracks in our cells. She is Professor Ava Nagales. Ava Nagales grew up in a small town on the outskirts of Madrid, Spain with her parents Nicholas and Carmen and her brother Javier Nagales. Ava's family expanded when she met and married her husband Howard Padmore at the University of California, Berkeley, where she currently lives and works. She has two teenage sons, Daniel and Ricky. While not working, she enjoys singing and dancing, cooking magazines, and skiing. Ava's education in physics started in Madrid, where she earned her Bachelor of Studies in Physics at the Public University of Madrid in Spain. She then earned her PhD from Keele University while working at the Synchrotron Radiation Source in the UK. Her postdoctoral work was performed in the Ken Downing Lab at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. There, she was the first to discover the atomic structure of tubulin using electron crystallography. She then joined the Molecular and Cell Biology Department at UC Berkeley in 1998. Since 2000, she has been an investigator at the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. She is also senior staff scientist at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. Presently, she is professor and head of the biochemistry, biophysics, and structural biology divisions of the molecular and cell biology department at UC Berkeley. On top of all of her academic accomplishments, she is also a member of the National Academy of Sciences and a member of the National Academy of the Arts and Sciences. Her awards are listed and numerous, but most recent is the Grim Wade Medal, which she will be receiving in February of 2019 for her being an outstanding researcher in biochemistry and molecular biology. To get started, let me ask Professor Nagales what actually started her along her journey. So I think I was interested in science very early in life, and there were certain figures from TV to my high school that inspired me. Um, but um, definitely the people that made the biggest impression were my math, physics, and biology teachers in high school. Three of them were actually women. They were incredibly capable and very, very inspiring, super dedicated. And I, I still meet with them uh, when I have the opportunity. Um, I think they were an example of how you can be very analytical, um, intellectually engage and pursue your dream irrespective of whether you are or not a woman. I have briefly explained how tubulin acts like the railroad tracks within our cells. Professor Nagales will now explain how tubulin and microtubules work and function in more detail and how to actually see the structure of the molecules in her space. So this is a cartoon representation of tubulin. Tubulin is actually what is called a heterodimer. It's a dimer of two different proteins that are called alpha and beta tubulin and that I will be presenting here. Alpha tubulin always in green and beta tubulin sometimes in blue, sometimes in red. You'll see. In any case, this is the building block of microtubules. Uh, microtubules are formed by the head-to-tail association of alpha-beta tubulin dimers, making what we call protofilaments. And then 13 protofilaments associate laterally with a certain geometry, giving rise ultimately to the closure of a tube um, that, because it's very small, we call a microtubule. So this is the animation that shows how that assembly and the change in the structure of tubulin is coupled. So tubulins are coming, they are adding, and every time they add, they switch the color of the protein that is underneath. 
Eventually, Marcucci will congregate to this state in which there's no more red containing subunits. And that is unsustainable. The structure of tubulin is such now that it cannot keep together and the microtubules fall apart. The knowledge of how microtubules work have been particularly relevant in the study in the treatment of cancer. So if you think about it, cancer is a disease in which cells are dividing in an uncontrolled way. Um, they are proliferating um, out of control and one way to target them is to uh, stop that cell proliferation. What if I want to see something that is a thousand times smaller than the flea, which is a millionth time smaller than the dog? This is about the size of a bacteria, about one micron. Um, for that, I will need very powerful light microscope just to detect the presence of the bacteria. To get into the structure inside the bacteria, I would already need electron microscope. But what I'm talking about are small molecules that are present, millions of them inside a cell. And those are in the scale of, of nanometers. That is now a, mil, a billionth, the size of a dog. And only very powerful instruments, electron microscopes, uh, are gonna be able to directly visualize those kind of structures. Um, so we need to use a state-of-the-art microscopy techniques in order to visualize microtubules. What Professor Nagales continues to work on in her lab is the use of cryo-electron microscopy, which is a technique that allows for the observation of biological specimens in their native environment at cryogenic temperatures to further studies involving the treatment of cancer. I've already been telling you about the method is electron microscopy we more specifically we call it we call it cryo electron microscopy the cryo comes from the fact that when we study these biomolecules the first thing that we have to do is to cool them to liquid nitrogen temperature uh, we do that at you know by freezing them at very very uh, high rates you know lowering the temperature at a rate of almost a million degrees per second and that is done so that the, the molecules are very well preserved and the water molecules that are around it don't even have the time to reorganize into a crystal, which is what you have in ice, uh, but rather it's in an, in an amorphous state. Professor Nagales currently teaches and runs her own lab at UC Berkeley using these techniques that can take millions of snapshots to further study microtubules dynamics including the structure and function of macromolecular assemblies. I hope that you have enjoyed this brief journey into the life of Professor Nagales and the background of her contribution. I would like to thank Professor Nagales and ask her if she has any words of advice for our class. It was great talking to you guys and I and I hope this is useful for someone especially um, uh, to women no women are late. I have to I have two boys uh, in in high school both of which have certain tendencies for science but I, I think it's inspiring um, hopefully it's inspiring to young people that um, especially in the biology field have to realize so much to be learned and so many possibilities for you to make a contribution so thank you very much for having me.